The bow frog is the end part of a stringed musical instrument's bow that encloses the mechanism responsible for tightening and holding the bow ribbon. Most of the bow frogs used in today's classical bows are made of ebony. Some synthetic bows have frogs made with materials that imitate ebony, while baroque bows use frogs made with various woods. The origin of the name frog is unknown, although it may derive from the use of the frog, the small device that bow makers use to shape it. It is also referred to as the heel or nut of the bow. The German equivalent frosch is the literal equivalent of frog, while in French and Italian the equivalent of heel is used. French also uses horse. The foreign language terms sometimes appear in musical instructions, such as otalon, indicating to play with the bow near the frog. However, the English term is also used, such as in the Alfred edition of George Jeshwin's An American in Paris, in which the violins and violas are instructed to play near the frog at bar 32. During the earliest periods of music history, prior the Baroque era, the frog was a curved piece of wood affixed to the bow that served as a sort of rail to guide the herobin and separate it from the stick. The bow hair was attached at both ends of the stick to the head and handle. The musician had to stretch and release the herobin while playing in order to obtain the desired tension. The first attempt to mechanically adjust the hair tension came with the CRA tilde copyright MAILLA tilde diaresis re, an notch and hook system that pulled the herobin by cranking the frog back and released it while moving forward. This uneasy device added considerable weight to the bow and was seldom used, but the concept for a new mechanical function of the frog was progressing. With baroque bows the frog was made with either the same wood as the stick or ivory. The woods typically used were common exotic woods, such as snakewood or amaret. During this time bow makers began carving the ivory, shifting their focus to the frog's aesthetic beauty. A major improvement came with the screw and eyelet system, beginning in the 18th century. This was used in the workshop of Antonio Stradivari, and became the standard with the transition bow, exemplified by the Kramer bow. FRANA tilde section Ois Aviator pioneered the modern classical bow in the second half of the 18th and early 19th centuries. Taught, with suggestions from the virtuoso violinist G. B. Viotti, improved upon the limitations of the Baroque bow. Previously a clockmaker, Taut added a great deal of precision to the art of bow making. One example was his perfection of the screw and eyelet system, a ferrule circling the frog tongue and herobin, that worked as a guide to flatten and widen the bow hair. Taut also viewed the frog as a precious item and worked with ebony, gold, and tortoise shell. He standardized the use of ornamentation, such as the inlay of a pearl eye on each side of the frog, and covered mechanical parts with a pearl slide. In the generations that followed taut, ebony became the new standard material for frogs. Nicola's Lupert built upon taut's model to add the metallic underslide that reinforced the fragile ebony edges. Jacques Lafleur devised a method of attaching the hair that suppressed the need for the conventional mortise plug, and wedge. In Paris, Jean-Baptiste Voulorme introduced an oval ferrule that allowed the herobin to widen and flatten as the violinist augmented the pressure. The attention given to the beauty of the bullfrog continued throughout centuries, particularly with the use of tortoise shell in the 19th and first part of the 20th century. Like famous tortoise shell-mounted hilbo, made by bands in the early 1920, until the use of tortoise shell was regulated by sights. Jean-Jacques Mellant was the first bow maker to split the frog into two parts. The throat remains permanently attached to the stick, while the body of the frog is detached and movable in order to tighten the hair. The purpose of this invention was to always keep the leather grip and the frog at the same distance.